God bless you. This is me, Pastor Kevin Treasure, aka the Winner's Mentality, helping you win in life. Amen. Winning with your words. Amen. Today, I want to talk about soul winning. I want to talk about soul winning from the time I got saved. By the time, the first time I gave my life to the Lord, I came under a mighty man of God, my spiritual father. Bishop Carter Morgan, he's gone on to glory now. Amen. And he taught me something that's so profound that I'm living off and I'll continue to teach others. Amen. I'll continue to teach others that they may continue to teach others, that they may continue to teach others. And it's biblical. He said to me, Kevin, if you really want the anointing, have the heart for souls. Have the heart for soul winning. Have the heart to tell people about Jesus. And from the time that I got saved, I was trained. I was trained to tell people about Jesus. Tell them. And he said, listen, you may not need to know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, but the simplest testimony is tell them what God has done in your life. And I believe there's people at the sound of my voice. You have a strong desire to be a witness. You have a strong desire to preach the gospel. You have a strong desire to tell other people about Jesus. And some of you may be young Christians, but you've got a zeal for God. And some of you just have that desire, but there's a bit of fear there. I want to break you out of that fear today in the name of Jesus. I break you out of that mold. I break you out of the spirit of intimidation. I break it off your life in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, I break off everything that stopped you from being who God has called you to be and doing what God has called you to do. You're about to do exploits. You're going to launch out into the deep and you're going to do what God has called you to do. And this is a simple, simple, I mean, this has been around for years. And for some people who don't know what to say to people or, or they don't know how to witness to their friends and family, and I know sometimes it seems weird that sometimes the family or people you've known the longest are sometimes maybe even the hardest to evangelize to i mean i evangelize to everyone but i speak to people and they be like oh some people don't listen to me and they, and they feel and i said listen his word will never return void let me tell you that now his word will never return void he said he watches over his word to perform it listen our job isn't to do the job of the holy spirit our job is just to be a witness it's the holy spirit that deals with the heart he's the one that converts people he's the one that convicts of sin he he alone not us our job is just to give the word and let the lord do the rest but there's a simple simple explanation romans road amen for so so people who desire to win the lost the desire to tell people about the lord and you can find this everywhere and it's many books it's on the internet but sometimes it's good to jesus said and i believe it's in the book of matthew he said that um a man is like a um a merchant a merchant that brings out things old and new <laughs> yes this is it matthew i believe it's matthew he said he's like a merchant that brings out things old and new here we go matthew thirteen fifty two, and he said unto them therefore every scribe who has been trained in the kingdom of heaven is like a master of the house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old so today i'm bringing out what is old and what is known amen and i just want to help people who have a desire to tell people about Jesus. You know that Jesus is coming again soon and you've seen the time is winding up and the Bible is taking, the Bible is unfolding right before our eyes. You, you cannot deny the existence, amen. These things that we're seeing taking place, it's been written, it's written years ago and it's been unfolding right before our eyes. I believe that we are living in exciting times and this is a time where we must arise and tell people about Jesus. Give him the hope. When all hope is gone, there is still an answer to try Jesus, to let people know that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. It's time to turn people, time to lift up our voice like a trumpet and let people know that Jesus is coming again soon. Let them know that God has provided a way out for mankind and that through his son, Christ Jesus, that we have been forgiven, but we have to accept, amen, the sacrificial lamb. We have to finish, accept the finished work that Jesus Christ has done on the cross when he died and rose again. And the simple Romans wrote, is a few steps amen and i'm going to take you through them a few steps of salvation amen and the first one starts at romans chapter 3 23 the bible says we have all sinners by nature the bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god the bible says all of us every single one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of god let me find it right here so you can read it for ourselves so you know that i'm not reading from the newspaper that i'm reading from the word of god know it by heart we have to read it right here for all have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. So what is he saying? All of us have sinned. And many people try to justify themselves and say, well, I'm a good person. Well, I, I always throw the law at them. I mean, anybody that wants to justify themselves in the eyes of God, there, there's none righteous. No, not one. There, none of us. Uh, uh, I always give them um, this little three, four, three or four point plan. I say, well, have you ever told a lie before? And most of them will say yes. Um, because everybody's lied at some point or another and if you haven't just keep on living you're a sinner by nature and then i'd say have you ever stolen anything before and some people say yes some people say no and then i'd remind them well listen you've just actually did confess that you have told a lie before but okay and then i say to them have you ever taken the lord's name in vain before that's like using god's name as a, a swear word or a cuss word and they say well yeah more than likely yes and then i then i hit them with the big one and i say i mean jesus said um if you look with lust, you've already committed the act in your heart. Have you ever looked to the opposite sex and lusted in your heart? Now, 99.9% of the time, or I'd say 100% of the time, every single one of us had looked with lust in our heart. And they'd say yes. And I'd say, okay, for all four, I'd say to them, by your own admission, you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. And that's just four of the Ten Commandments. I'm not even going into the other six. But you've broken them. And the Bible says if you break one, you actually break all of them. So under those conditions, knowing that you're lying, lying thieving, blasphemous, adultery at heart. If you was to stand before the king, if your life was to end right now. And you was to stand before the judgment of God. Where would your soul spend eternity? And then some people say, well, he's a good God. And I say, well, now, now it's idolatry. Because now you're making up a God in your mind. Because no... He said, if he's a good God, he's then also a just God. So he has to give you justice, amen? If he wasn't a good God, then he wouldn't be just. So he has to give you what's just. And for that, now, you you know that you wouldn't pass. You'd, you'd be in hell because you've broken the law. And that would scare you. That would scare anybody to know that if you was to die today. And they'd say, well, what about you? And then I put myself in it. I say, I'm just like you. That's why it comes back to it for all have sinned and come short of the glory we're all sinners every single one of us i'm getting you to understand that we're all sinners and what you got to get people to understand we've all sinned for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god every single one of us come short when it comes to the law we all come short the law is just the schoolmaster bringing us to christ so the law lets you know listen we can't keep the law we cannot keep the law so after everyone gets that clarity that listen we've all sinned then you go down to romans six twenty three. And you remind them that listen, the wages of sin is death. So that there's a price for what we're doing. There's a we're gonna pay a price, amen. Yeah, well, <laughs> sin has wages, sin pays. It's not a good pay, but sin pays and always pays at the end. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So you've got to let them know there's a penalty. Amen. There, there, there is a penalty. The wages of sin is death. But the good news is that there is someone who's paid the price. There's someone, you said you're already guilty. There's someone who's coming and he said, listen, I've paid the price. He deserves guilt. He deserves death. But listen, I've took it. I've paid the price. I've paid the debt. The, the gift of God. It's a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So you got to let them know. It's, there's eternal life only in one person, Christ Jesus. Not in Allah, not in Buddha, not in Confucius, not in Halle Selassie, not in any of those names. They're all dead. There's one person, if you go to Jerusalem, it'll say, he is not here. He is risen. And the Bible says in Romans, now you take them down to Romans 5, 8. And the Bible says, but God commendeth his love towards us. In that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrated his love for us, his enemies. While we're yet sinners, when we weren't thinking about him, when our hearts were far away from him, when we were living the way we wanted to do and doing what we wanted to do with who we wanted to do it and when we wanted to do it, when we were living in sin, the Bible says Christ died for us. Before we even knew, Christ died for us. So God commended his love towards us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. How much more? So you've got to let them know, listen, we are enemies of God, but Christ already made that provision. He knew you're going to need a sacrifice. So he, he came as that sacrifice. He took what we deserve. He died a horrible death on the cross. He died. He said, no man, take my life, but I give it up freely. I give it up. He said, I've power to take it, lay it up. I've tired to take it up, to put it down. I've power to take it up. He has the power. Amen. And he died and he rose again triumphantly. God demonstrated his love for us as his enemies. Amen. And then you take them through. And then you say, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And because of all this, because you know all this. Have I missed one? I think I've missed one. 
I think I might be useful. And because you know all this, then we can come and tell him and say, when you trust God and you surrender to Jesus Christ as Lord, then you can tell him, Romans 10 verse 9 to 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God is raising from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you take them through the simple Romans road, Romans 3.23, all have sinned. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but there's a gift, this eternal gift, a good gift, eternal gift through Jesus Christ our Lord. And let them know that he's demonstrated his love, that while we're yet sinners, he died for us. And then we tell them, this is how we trust in Jesus. This is how we put our trust in Jesus. Amen. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. Because with the heart man believes, but with the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. And God is saying, put your trust in him. I've shown you that you're a sinner, but I've shown you that provision has been made, that Jesus Christ has made the way. And all he's saying to you is just surrender all to you. Put your trust in Jesus. Listen, young are dying. I'm going to funerals of 16-year-olds getting stabbed, 18-year-olds getting shot, 30-year-olds with leukemia. None of us knows what tomorrow holds. That's why the Bible says today is acceptable. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. He says, behold, I stand at the door and I simply knock. He will never force his way in. He stands at the door of every man, every woman, every child, and he simply knocks. He will never force his way in. But he's really calling everybody to a life of repentance. And I tell people, listen to me. If you live 80 years, 90 years, if you live to be 100 years old, 100 years old is a drop in the ocean compared to eternity. Listen to me. Your body will die, but your spirit will live forever. And there's only two places that a man's soul will spend eternity. That is heaven or hell. And we have a choice. We have a choice where we're going to go. God will not take one thing from one man. Listen, there's one thing God will not take away from man. And that is his free will. We have a choice. God does not force anyone to serve him. It's your choice. So I beg you, make the right choice in putting Jesus first and making him Lord over your life. And it's a simple prayer. If you know you've been struggling, you know, you, you said, God, I, I've done so much. You say, God, I've even tried it before. He said, no, come again. He said, he's married to the backslider. And I believe if you're hearing my voice and God is saying, listen to me, you may have wandered away from him, but he's saying, come back to me, come back to me. Like the prodigal son, you may have fallen into some mischief and some things has happened. God knows where you are. And he's saying, come just as you are. Come, come. And he's saying, I'm inviting you back into a relationship with me he wants to love on you and he cares for you and he knows where you are but you've got to do it today because the bible says there's no repentance in the grave it's appointed once a man to die and after that the judgment so you've got to put your trust in him today the bible says today is the day of salvation so if you're ready amen and this is a way you can walk them in this is a simple way i'll go again we've all sinners by nature romans 3 23 and when Romans 6 23 receive eternal life as a free gift, amen. Because sin has a wage, it pays, amen. Romans 5 8, God demonstrated his love for us, his enemies, while we yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then we tell him we've got to surrender to Jesus. He's the one, he's the only one we can trust in. He's the one that can change our life. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world, black, white, Indian, Chinese, rich or poor, tall or short, fat or slim. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And then it goes on to say, God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And then you just take them through a simple prayer of forgiveness. Say, if you're really sure and you really mean it from the heart, because God deals with the heart. God is not looking at your hair, your nails, your makeup. God is not looking at all those things. God is looking at the heart. You see, it's about your confession, what you confess. This slogan is called the power of words, the winner's mentality. Amen. The Bible says we have to believe in our heart, but there must be accompanying confession. Amen. He says, if you deny before men, I will deny you before my father. But if you accept me, if you receive me before men, I will. Amen. Receive you before my father and the angels in heaven. And you just take them through a simple prayer, something so simple, something like this. Say, dear God, I know I'm, I'm a sinner. I know my sin deserves to be punished. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for me and rose from the grave. And I turn from my sin and I put my trust in Jesus alone as my Savior. 
Come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you that I receive forgiveness and everlasting life can now be mine through Christ Jesus. I thank you for saving me and setting me free. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And you can practice this. Just practice, practice, practice. Because I believe there are many people at the sound of my voice. You know you're born to win souls. You want to tell people about Jesus. But I just break the spirit of fear off your life right now. In the name of Jesus, I break the spirit of the fear of what man will say about you. I bind every spirit of intimidation in the name of Jesus Christ and as if everything that held you bound and stopped you from speaking about the wonderful works of God, I break its power now in the name of Jesus Christ and as if and I decree and I declare your mouth opened in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare your mouth opened. I decree and I declare that your mouth is now opened in the name of Jesus to speak about Jesus, to evangelize the gospel, to speak his word to a lost and dying world in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive it. It's happening even now. You are born for this you will evangelize you will be a witness for jesus christ you will speak as an oracle of god and you will tell people about jesus but most of all people will listen this has been the romans road for those of you that are desiring to be a witness for jesus tell people about jesus on the bus on the school run at work wherever you can go tell people about jesus let them know of the love that jesus christ has for them because jesus christ is coming again soon so be encouraged. You can do all things through Christ which loves you, Christ which strengthens you. Amen. You can do this. You are born for this. Be blessed and be a witness for Jesus. This has been me, Pastor Kevin Treasure, aka The Winner's Mentality, helping you win in life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>